everybody, Pete Werner here with this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show at Saratoga Springs, uh, being joined by Corey Fiascanaro, Sean Falk, Steve Porter, and Jackie Gailey. We're about to have dinner up at the Turf Club, which is kind of located in a remote corner of the resort, uh, right above the clubhouse for the Lake Buena Vista Golf Course. Um, I'd eaten here once before, about a year and a half ago, and it was quite good, so I really wanted to come back and do a review. So since we're doing Saratoga Springs this week as part of our DVC 7 and 7 series, thought we'd do this, so let's check it out. All right, so we have been seated and uh, ordered our meal. Our appetizers just came. And for my appetizer, I got the classical, classical French onion soup, caramelized onions, rich beef broth, melted Swiss and Gruyere cheese with croutons for $9. And I will say, this is a good French onion soup. I'm not gonna say it's the best I've ever had, but I will say it is better than most that I've had on Disney property. Um, a lot of the ones on Disney property end up with this weird finish in the taste. There's like this almost a bitterness or something. I don't know what it is. This isn't. This is sweet because the onion should be caramelized. Um, really nice combination of cheese on top that blends beautifully with the broth. Um, so I was really, really pleased with it. Uh, I got the exact same thing that Pete got for my appetizer. Um, I thought it was really good. I, I love French onion soup. Um, this one had a ton of onions in it, so it was not like super watery like some of them can be, where you don't get a lot. It was very cheesy. Um, I, it, was, it was very good. I don't know what else to add beyond what he already added to it, so I agree with him. Um, I ordered the uh, Jumbo Lump Crab Cake. I love crab cake. Um, it's $13 with avocado salsa and uh, citrus uh, romolade. What's this? Romolade? Romolade? I never can pronounce things. Anyways, I haven't tried to eat. I haven't gotten to eat it yet because it had a hair on it, uh, unfortunately. Um, and at first I thought, I'm losing hair. Maybe my hair fell in the thing. But uh, it was like baked into the crab cake, so definitely wasn't my hair unfortunately it was also blonde hair I don't have blonde hair so I haven't been able to try it yet I'm excited because it did look good besides the hair if I could just erase that from my brain I would have been very excited to eat it uh, but I'll have to see how it is when I actually get it I have one of my favorite appetizers on the planet fried buttermilk calamari except that this calamari is a little bit different because it comes with pepperoncini which i have never had calamari served with that before and it's actually really good so it's fried just like the calamari is fried um, these guys really know how to do calamari right here as well because i actually bit the calamari in half it is not rubbery at all it's perfection so good and it's 13 dollars so not terrible for calamari. Really, really good. So for my appetizer, I got the Asian-inspired crispy shrimp. It was $12, and it comes with sweet, spicy sweet chili, aioli, and a vegetable slaw. Uh, this is kind of like a, a, an appetizer that I would tend to get when I would go out to eat. Uh, to mention a few places, or at least one off the top of my head that has something similar to this, would be Yak and Yeti over at Animal Kingdom. They have a, a, a spicy aioli shrimp appetizer that I really, really like. Um, so I was kind of feeling like this would be a lot like that. Uh, it wasn't exactly like that, but it was really good. The sauce was extra creamy and had a nice little kick to it, but wasn't wasn't too spicy. It also had um, some sesame seeds in there, which sesame seeds don't really like have a flavor to me, but they add like they add a nice texture. And I'm kind of a I'm kind of a texture person when it comes to eating, so I like that. And um, the slaw was just basic vegetables. There was no like. Uh, seasoning or anything like that on it, but um, they definitely tasted fresh. And uh, one thing that the server m mentioned to us is that at this restaurant, everything is prepared 
to order. So like, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of times at the parks, the restaurants there, they, they do some, uh, some prepping for items that, you know, they would expect people to come in and order uh, so that they can kind of push people in and out a little bit faster. Uh, here though at Turf Club, we've been informed that everything's made to order, so it is more of a, uh, a slow-paced type of experience, and they specifically told us, you know, they don't, they don't rush you out here, so, and it's meant to be that way, so. For my main course, I got the grilled New York strip. This is aged in smoked salted butter, hand cut Parmesan rosemary fries, and grilled asparagus for $36. Um, if I had to use a word, uh, unremarkable. Uh, the steak wasn't bad. Um, it's not a top flight, top cut steak. Um, the salt, aging it in the salted butter added too much salt, quite frankly, <clears throat> to it. So, and this is from somebody who likes salt. And I found it to be too salty. This steak is would benefit so much from a signature rub. Um, kind of like what Steakhouse 55 does. They have their signature Steakhouse 55 rub. Turf Club should be doing that on a steak like this. That would have elevated the steak. Um, like I said, it wasn't bad, it was well cooked. It was cooked perfectly. Um, the uh, Parmesan rosemary fries, there was nothing about them that was even remotely special. They were just fries. Uh, same with the asparagus. Um, it was unremarkable. If, uh, if I was gonna qualify any dish as pedestrian, it would be this one. Um, at $36, uh, it's slightly overpriced. I'm not gonna say it's grossly overpriced, but slightly. Right. <clears throat> um, I got the pan-seared sea scallops. Uh, with vegetable succotash with sweet corn cream for $29. Did you say the price here is? Did, 36. 36 was his. Um, uh, mine was $29. Um, I, I went into this saying, oh, cool, there's scallops on the menu. Can't wait for Disney to disappoint me with scallops again, like they always do. And I was like, I'm not going to get it because I had already sworn off the Disney scallops because I don't ever like them. And then our server said, we're known for our scallops and they're very, very good. And so they're like, okay, well, that sounds like a challenge. You might as well get the scallops. So I gave it a shot. And once again, they're still not good. I don't understand what's happening with scallops at Disney. And I, I want to like them. Like it's a dish I enjoy and they overcook them every single time these there were five that it came with so it was actually a pretty good amount that you got because a lot of places only give you two or three so you did get five and they were a good size but they just still were not very good one piece would be really rubbery and then the next piece was like completely overcooked and all that and i don't know what to do with disney with scallops anymore if somebody out there has great scallops at disney that you just swear by please like let me know so i can go get them or whatever not in the comments but like email or something um and then their succotash is on the bottom and it's really watery like it's like they drained water like they're like they put corn in a strainer and then they just poured water over it to get that hint of corn flavor in water or something i don't know i've never it's like corn infused water possibly and i just don't know i don't know what to do with this so I don't know. I don't recommend this. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the uh, appetizer from, cause I had the whole hair situation. I had the, again, I had the jumbo lump crab cake. It was uh, $13. Uh, the second go around with no hair, it was actually very good. I enjoyed it a lot. It was kind of small, it was only a little bit bigger than maybe a half dollar. I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger than that, but uh, not very big. The flavor, the crab tasted fresh, tasted delicious. The um, only thing that is, it's supposed to be a lump crab cake, and it's a lot of Disney crab cake places do this where it's like super 
like shredded up so you're not actually getting lumps of crab you're getting like basically shredded grated up pieces of crab but that's fine i guess if the flavor's good um then for my main course i had seared duck breast and uh confit i learned about confit about i don't know 15 minutes ago it's pronounced confit oh yeah, Fiasco saying it's confit. Is he saying confit? Con- it's confit. He's confit. Yeah. Oh, confit. Silent. Don't, the T is silent. Oh, con- okay. So I I learned about confit about five seconds ago. Um, it was okay. I've had duck at Food and Wine before. This is the first time I've ever ordered it at a sit down restaurant. So bear with me. You're. This is a journey we're both going on. Um, I actually really like the taste and the flavor. It had like a maple s- tasting sauce on top and I enjoyed that a lot. I'm still not sure if I like the texture, like it tastes almost rubber to, rubbery to me, but uh, upon talking to Pete, this is prepared well. It just is not to my preference of the, the texture. Um, the I al- texture of mac and cheese. Yeah, it's not mac and cheese, but I mean, there are, there are more adventurous things despite what the comments might tell you. There are more adventurous things that I do like. Just this, I don't know, was, the flavor wasn't bad, but the, the texture wasn't my favorite. I also came with a uh, parsnips and fennel puree. Also did not like that. Um, I think this was more of a, I didn't order what's best for me. I probably should have gone for something more basic. I was trying to be a little bit more adventurous, and I think maybe I went too far outside of my zone. But that's all right. Um, got to try things new or new things sometimes. Uh, if I didn't mention it was $28. So it is what it is. I had salmon for dinner tonight and it was actually Chilean salmon. Yes. And it's, it was grilled and it was seasoned really well and it was so good. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on any of our shows, but I'm so spoiled with salmon. So I'm used to Alaskan salmon and like Atlantic salmon is not something I've ever been able to eat, but this salmon was so awesome, and I didn't even know they had Chilean salmon here. So anyway, it was really, really flavored well, and it came with a, it came with like a cucumber salad that was like shaved cucumber on the top. I wasn't too fond of that, but the asparagus was really good, and they threw in crispy bacon. So I got broccolini instead of the carrot puree that it was supposed to come with because carrot puree sounded like baby food to me and that's not really my kind of thing either. So anyway, the bacon made it really, really, really good. And it was $28. And I think it was really awesome. So I definitely have it again. And I'm glad to know that they have a salmon here that I like. So might be back for it. So for my entree, I opted for the Rancher's Reserve Prime Rib. That was $33. It came with Yukon Gold Mashed Potatoes, Broccolini, and Ajus. Aju. Even I know that one. You heard it from them. But um, I actually really like this. I, I am a big steak person. I like to go out and uh, get fillets most of the time. That's kind of my go-to. There isn't a fillet on this menu, so I thought, you know, I'll get a prime rib, which is a fattier cut. I really like fillets a lot because you're not going to find much, if not any, fat on a fillet. Uh, So a little bit outside my comfort zone there, getting a more fattier cut with the prime rib. But uh, with that being said, it was was pretty impressive. Uh, $33.00. I mean, right off the bat, I think of that comparatively to something like uh, Longhorn Steakhouse off property. That's kind of the price I'm going to pay for a prime rib over there. Give or take a few bucks, but around that price. Uh, But not only that, we're on Disney property. And with that being said, I mean, I just went to Longhorn's the other day, and I thought this was a better steak than I had there. Um, It was super juicy. It was super flavorful. Uh, I kind of am going to echo a little bit on what Pete said about the saltiness. Uh, A lot of the flavor on the edges of the steak were just overpowering with salt. So that was a little bit of an issue. But um, the broccolini was super good. Uh, Also, on the same theme, the the main seasoning that I was picking up is, is again, salt. But I enjoyed that. I do like salt. But it wasn't until the mashed potatoes that I was really impressed with this entree. 
Uh, th that was like the thing on my plate I cared least about. I don't really care for mashed potatoes ever. I really like green vegetables and I really like steak. Mashed potatoes, I could take them or leave them. These are really good mashed potatoes though. Uh, they had like, they weren't like fully mashed. They had like chunks of potatoes still in it, which again, back to the texture thing, I really liked that. I liked it a lot. Um, as far as the sauce goes, I didn't really think the steak needed the sauce, aside from the fact that the outer parts of it were a little bit too salty. Uh, the innards of the steak were just right, and I, I'd get this again. Innards, the middle, whatever you want, whatever word you want to use to express the inside of the steak. So for dessert, um, we got everything, right? We ordered everything. It's on the dessert menu. I chose the gelato. A trio of seasonal gelatos, $8. One was a popcorn gelato, another was a salted, um, salted caramel gelato, another was a blackberry and chocolate chip gelato. Um, not bad. This was $8. Um, not bad. I think it, this was better than anything else I tried here. Um, we had the chocolate and cherries which I'm trying to think of the most delicate way I could put this. The last time my dog had a stomach virus is what it reminds me of. We'll let that speak for itself. That was $7. Um, the Fresh Harvest, which is a peach crisp with a classic strudel crust, uh, creme fraiche ice cream, and a caramel sauce, $8. Eh. The lemon meringue pie, the classic lemon meringue pie, tasted more like a key lime and not a good one at that. Um, the vanilla creme brulee, that was $7. The uh, meringue was $8. The uh, dog stomach virus was $7. Fresh, har fresh harvest was $8. Creme brulee, seven. Uh, the creme brulee, I tasted more egg than vanilla. This is supposed to be a Madagascar vanilla bean creme brulee with buttery Breton crisp. Um, damn clip-ons. Um, across the board, these were just disappointing. Uh, very, very disappointing desserts, but I'll let everybody else give their opinions. Um, I tried a couple of things. I really didn't. Um, actually, I pretty much tried everything except that sickening thing that was served. Um, but the peach cobbler, I actually liked it pretty well. I'm not a huge fruit dessert person, especially like hot fruit. That's not really my thing. But I didn't think it was bad. Um, the uh, meringue pie, I didn't think that was necessarily bad either. It just didn't taste like what it was supposed to taste like. Um, I've been eating a, quite a bit of the, uh, I, I will say his gelatos did taste like the things they said it was supposed to taste like. I just don't really want popcorn as an ice cream flavor or like black cherry as an ice cream flavor. I like more regular flavors. And then the, the creme brulee, I think would have been better if it was warm. Like it's very like, I don't know, like maybe it's been just sitting out a while. It's very like room temperature, I guess I would say. And it kind of has made the interior like room temperature-ish. Um, it, it's okay. I, I don't know. Like this, I, this, the restaurant's not bad. It's just, we can literally see Disney Springs right there. I mean, the boats are literally moving across the way. So I just don't see a reason to come here, I guess, when there's all those options across the way. Yeah, I'm probably just going to sound like a broken record and echoing what everyone else has said. i just not impressed by the desserts. The thing that I was most looking forward to is probably the, the harvest peach cobbler type thing because I like fruity desserts, but it, it was fine. It was not like, oh, my gosh, you got to come here for that. Um, and everything else was just a different level of meh. So, yeah, not a lot to say that hasn't already been said, but don't if you're planning on coming for dessert, don't. So I ordered the Fresh Harvest, which is a peach crisp with classic streusel crust, creme fraiche ice cream, and caramel sauce. And, you know, I thought it was just all right. It, it wasn't... I was sort of expecting there to be some, like, cinnamon and nutmeg, maybe, or something to just kind of give you that harvesty feel. It was all, it was all right. Um, this 
I have to talk about this chocolate and cherries business, though. This this chocolate dessert came out, and it looked like a hot dog. It was a shape of a hot dog. And it's chocolate. It says it's chocolate and cherries, brown butter mousse, caramel sponge, and poached sour cherries. I didn't get that from that. It's It tastes like a dark chocolate mousse. It's really rich, but I don't know. It was really odd. And the the classic lemon meringue pie. So when I picture a classic mer- lemon meringue pie, I'm picturing the kind you see in a diner that's a triangle shape with meringue on the top. Our, this, this lemon meringue pie, first of all, the meringue wasn't stiff. It was like flopped over. And it tastes like a cream, like a key lime pie. So I don't know. It it was good. I, it was all right, but it was really interesting to me. So I'd, I'd have to say that it was probably my favorite out of all of them because even the creme brulee was really eggy. Like it, it was very thin and really, really eggy. So that wasn't my favorite either. And I usually like desserts. So I'm not a big fan. So I didn't order any particular dessert for myself, just kind of tried what was going on at the table. And since we ordered every dessert on the menu, I had plenty to try from. So I tried three total. I tried the uh, lemon meringue pie, I tried the chocolate and cherries, and I tried the fresh harvest. Um, I'll start with my favorite being the fresh harvest, which was the peach crisp. So it's warm peaches and uh, pie crust with cold vanilla ice cream. I think I'm just a sucker. If you take warm apples or peaches with pie crust and put cold ice cream on top, I'm always gonna like it. I'm just always gonna like it, and I liked this. I thought it was really good, and for eight bucks, I think that's a pretty decent deal. There was also caramel sauce on there, too. Um, Wasn't crazy about the lemon meringue pie. Uh, I did kind of get that key lime vibe that everybody's kind of saying, so I'll kind of leave it at that. not that this is something I would typically order myself, but wasn't too crazy for it when I tried it. Uh, chocolate and cherries. Presentation is definitely odd. Um, doesn't necessarily scream appetizing to me. Although I tried it and I didn't think it was bad. Um, but by far and beyond, fresh harvest, I like that. That's the best one in my opinion. But again, take that with a grain of salt because you take warm filling cold ice cream and i like it every time so i don't know okay so we have finished our meal um i will go first um it wasn't terrible but there was there's no reason to come here uh this is a really safe menu um that's the best way i can put it it's a very safe menu And given how close this is to Disney Springs um, and the kind of options you have over in Disney Springs, this has to be a lot better than safe. They really need to start taking some risks and doing something unique with the menu to get some buzz going, to get people over here because otherwise there's really no reason to eat here. It is just pedestrian is the only word I can use. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way to come back here. It wasn't terrible. I will say... Our, our server, Sharon. Sharon, was fantastic. She was lovely. Um, and the food wasn't bad. The desserts, forget it. That, that chocolate log dessert, whatever that was, yeah. that was the most visually unappealing dessert I have ever seen in my life. It was comically bad. Yeah. Comically bad. I agree with that. I don't know how anybody looked at that and said, yeah, that's a good idea. It really looks like someone took a dump on the plate. Um, I'm sorry to be gross, but the first thing I thought when I saw it, Jackie saw hot dog, I saw my dog's stomach, uh, stomach virus. Um, but uh, total, total for, the, uh, for the night was $277 with a 20% Tables in Wonderland discount, which also factors in an 18% gratuity. So that's about $52 a person, $53 a person. Um, not worth it. Not worth it for that same $53, you can have a better meal over at Disney Springs. I'm sorry to say it, but scale of one to 10, Steve, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna have a hard time doing my score because I got something that I was trying to go out on a limb. limb. Uh, 
from what you also I, had hair. Yeah. I had hair in my appetizer, so that's gonna knock it down at least two points. That's being generous, I think. I don't know. I, I would say like a four for me. Ooh. Uh, but I think part of that is I ordered the wrong thing for my entree, so. No, but that's your. That's, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Jonathan? Um, think about, I do think, like I don't wanna be too, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about two and a half, maybe. Wow, it's really? Not, it's not that the, I thought the food was just okay. But like, as you're saying it, I mean, we ended up spending over $50 per person. You could ate at California Grill. You could have ate at, you could have almost eaten at uh, Be Our Guest or Cinderella's Royal Table. You could get on a boat right there and go over to Disney Springs and eat essentially at any restaurant there. I don't think there's anything at Disney Springs that's uh, more expensive than this, at least. Um, even Boathouse and all that is about on that level and you would get significantly better food. It's that close. And most people I think traveling to Saratoga Springs have larger families, larger groups they're coming with. And I mean, we're a group of five, but there's families and there's a family across from us that had like 10 people at it. Their bill is gonna be like over 400 and something dollars easily for what they ordered. And I, and it's not a thing of like so much, the food was, are you okay? The food was just below this okay is stone, this is stone cold sober right the the food was below okay but with all the options surrounding it like i don't want to even give it a high enough number that people are like eh because even if you're just here and you're like this is where we're staying as our resort leave and go somewhere else like there's just not even that's not an added value so yeah mm -hmm. see and so i loved my calamari and my salmon was amazing so I, I just am not terribly picky about dessert, mm -hmm. but none of these desserts really floated my boat to the point where I had more than two bites of any of the five things we got. And that's not usually how I roll. So I have to, you know, I have to say it more than, I mean, my appetizer and entree were really, really good, but dessert just didn't fly for me. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give it a six because I feel like I need to at least give it a six. So for, for my entree and the appetizer. Where are you? There you are. There I am. Um, I think I'm probably going to be the most positive uh, review of the bunch. Uh, my appetizer I thought was really good. Uh, the prime rib, which it isn't the type of cut of a steak that I would normally get. Again, I like the opposite, being a filet. No fat versus lots of fat. But this was a really good prime rib. And I think for the price that it was, I think it was pretty fair. Um, and also, like, I don't have the same opinions everybody else is having about the desserts. I thought the uh, the peach crisp was actually pretty good, but again, I may be biased because you take a warm filling with cold ice cream on top, and I pretty much will always like it. So, with that being said, um, I'm giving it I'm giving it a seven, and I, I will kind of agree that the, the only thing this restaurant's just kind of like okay, it's very moderate, and I think the only thing it really has going for it is that it's at Saratoga Springs where they don't really have an abundance of good dining options. However, Disney Springs is right there. So, I mean, I guess the only thing that you'd really go here for is if you were staying here and didn't want to take the short walk, but it is a short walk to like 30 better options, but seven. And I, you know, on a scale of one to 10, like I said, my steak wasn't bad. It, I don't think it was worth what I paid for it. Um, but it wasn't ridiculously overpriced. I thought the French onion soup was very good. Um, the desserts were really disappointing. Um, and for all things considered, uh, six and a half is what I give this. It's not slightly above average in some regard, but nothing I'm gonna go out of my way for. They really need to take some risks with this menu and do something to set themselves apart. They have to get, if they're gonna charge this price, they've gotta give people a reason to come here instead of Disney Springs. And right now that menu doesn't cut it. So there you have it. That's our look at the Turf Club at Disney Saratoga Springs Resort. And that's this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next week.